Okay, I'm going to be alive soon. I hope everybody's just excited as we are to be here today. We have got Melanie over here, and we're going to be introducing her and saying more about um, what's going to go on with her week. Down below me, we have Karen Lowe. Of course, she's been the the captain this week for Dana and done an amazing job. And Dana leads, it gets to hear all her surprises and discoveries. Um, I know Dana wanted to give a shout out to a few people though. And if you want to go ahead and do that yeah. next. <laughs> yeah, I want to say hi to my mom and I know my brother and sister-in-law and sister and a cousin and I don't know who else, but it's I'm glad you're here and we get to discover this together. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> now, I'm going to go ahead and tell um, people a little bit about WikiTree, just in case you don't know and you're new tuning in. We are a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we collaborate to grow an accurate global tree that connects us all, and it's free. Now, the WikiTree Challenge is our year-long event and part of our year of accuracy, where each week we take on a genealogist branches and we collaborate to make it more accurate and more complete than anywhere else. Our goal is to improve our accuracy on WikiTree, add more family connections and make more friends. And we certainly have done that this year. So here is Karen to tell you what we have found. Yay. <laughs> Oops. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Just a momentary technical difficulty. Um, we had so much fun with Dana's uh, tree this week. Everyone pitched in. We had plenty of international collaboration, which we'll see more in the second half of the tree. Um, and and we took a look. We, we work out from the great grandparents. We don't want to get too close and leave... Uh, you know, Dana's mom and brother and sister and cousins uh, alone for her to, to contact. Uh, and the first great grandparent we looked at was uh, we on the Stewart line. And that was Andrew McClintock Stewart. Stewart. Um, but, you know, I said international would come in the second half and I was wrong because I forgot about Frenia Klein. Uh, Klein, you might recognize as a German name, and the German lines on Frenian's uh, side just exploded. There was some careful research done by our challenge members. Uh, she is Dana's fifth great grandmother, and she has nine new direct ancestors. Wow. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's, it was pretty amazing to see. Um, one of our team members working outward on the stewards and they added sources for each step of the path uh you know not just grabbing from another tree but but finding the documents to prove each generational connection and the end result was that one of dana's ninth great grandfathers had his father proven and on the vincent line we have a new 10th great grandfather for dana and family yeah. adrian vincent Nice, he, nice. Yeah, he was the first immigrant from Belgium to settle in New Netherland or New York now. Uh, he came over on the Mary and John in 1634, uh, along with another 139 people. Um, and the people who came to New Netherlands are folks from that. The New Netherlands Project will tell you there was a lot of hardship in the first five years. They ate a lot of clams and a lot of fish. Uh, they didn't really have bread, um, so, so high protein, but that's not all you need. But they were happy to, um, to get away from the political constraints that they had in England. So, so they were happy to be early Americans. Wow. Yeah, and there's a really early interesting history on, I don't know if you've read much about that line uh, with the Vincents, um, but in 1654, he received a license to sell brandy, and they think that may have gotten him into a little bit of trouble, you know, gave him a little <laughs> bit of a reputation, but he actually wound up... Um, suing somebody successfully for slander who had been spreading gossip that he was a bigamist. And we did have that hinted in several of people on the line. So <laughs> that was kind of interesting. But there was another one and one of the uh, lady had called his daughter a very slanderous word. And so he sued her and she was brought up on charges. Him and the son-in-law got together and sued her and they found her guilty 
and her punishment was that she had to remain quiet for the future and utter no more infamous words. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> I thought that was just charming and, and cute. Right. Uh, fortunately, no one has punished me thusly. Uh, Bessie, <laughs> <laughs> right. Bessie, uh, her middle name is Waldron and uh, uh, Bessie Merrill, Andrew's wife. Uh, it looks like Dina's third great grandmother is Nancy Waldron, and you know that our challenge member Patty Waldron was all over this family, yeah. um, as well as other uh, challenge members. We're thinking that Nancy Waldron may have been a great granddaughter of Leffert Waldron. There's some doubt about which one of Leffert's grandsons was Nancy's father. So, so we had some pretty lively discussion about the different possibilities. Uh, Leffert's two great two grandfathers were both born in the Netherlands. They both arrived with their parents in what was then New Amsterdam in the mid 17th century. So mid 1600s. And, um, oh, I didn't, uh, you know, there's always one more thing that I wanted to do. <laughs> Lefford's yeah. grandfather was one of the subjects of Douglas Richardson's uh, article in a New York biographical and historical review, I believe. Um, and it was called The European Origin and Ancestry of Joseph and Resolved Waldron. I did uh, add Douglas's grandparents uh, to Wikitree this week, but I forgot to note down which of them was closest to you and look at what might have inspired him to look at those Waldrons 25 years ago. Uh, right. his, so Leffert's other, uh, and, and Douglas Richardson's still with us. He's on Wikipedia. So, hey, he's a, he's a notable who we might want to add and, uh, as well. Leffert's other grandfather is one of the subjects of the Leffert's family pap uh, papers that are held at the Brooklyn Historical Society. The Leffert papers cross almost four centuries. They're digitized and they're all online uh, called As An American Family Grows in Brooklyn. So that's a great source for looking into the Waldrons. Nice. And I've been looking at Leffert for a long time, but I couldn't uh, quite make, figure that connection either. So. Yeah, well. But that's nice that you went beyond that. So, yeah. Right. Time to go to, to Brooklyn. Uh, our next great grandparent is Emile Wilhelm Peters. A lot of brick walls came down here. This nice. was um, some great collaboration. Um, Jacob Eckhard Peters, his father was proven to be a Johann Peters. And uh, Eckhart's wife, um, Hedwig, got a new paternal grandfather as well. Um, her mother was Anna Margareta Ahrens, and uh, she married two men that were both named Borgward. So that's fun when you get to pick that apart. But uh, we found that it was Johann, right, um, Eckhart's father, that was the new direct ancestor for you. And that added six new direct ancestors wow. of that uh, Peters and Borgward line. Yeah, and that's when it's nice to have our experts, you know, because they right. come in and read the marriage record and they're like, oh, wait yeah. a minute, it says, it says she's widow Borgard already. Why, <laughs> you know, wow, why yeah. are we looking at this name <laughs> widow again? Widow Borgward married Mr. Borgward. What's that about? Well, that that's, uh, and that comes up, you know, in other parts of the family too, you know, where someone, um, uh, loses a spouse and then winds up marrying a yeah. sibling of yeah. the one they lost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe yeah. you can tell me how you are pronouncing the surname of Francis Reinhardt. Are you saying Kakel or something? Or oh, it's, it's Cakely. Cakely. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So uh, on this line, we looked at uh, Katerina Kern. Mm -hmm. Uh, your third great grandmother, and found two full sets of proven grandparents here. And I remember this one because I, uh, some of us have been taking field trips this week uh, to the family history libraries in our yeah. neighborhoods. Uh, yes. I happen to live close to the Grand uh, Family History Library uh, here in Utah, and and so we popped over there to look at baptism records on the Kern family and had our experts to help us um, analyze them and, and read the German, of course. Wow. So, yeah. um, so we found that L Laurentius Kern was the son of Joachim Kern and Ursula Beringer. And then Maria Hauser, we found her parents to be Joseph Hauser and Maria Ritzenhaupt. 
uh, written for that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. It, here's where you can tell that we're genealogy nerds because the one day I was so excited and I was telling my husband, we have three people that are family history libraries right now. And they were like, they were like, just There's one in Utah, uh, one over here and one over there. And, and yeah, some of those nice. uh, images that, you know, they get the rights to scan them, but, but they have a requirement that you be in the library, which we have yeah. come to interpret as, or parked outside the library while well, it's closed, but the Wi-Fi is still right. on. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, so one of us was sitting in a sunny gazebo outside of their uh, town library, which recently became a, an authorized family history library. Nice. So uh, just a few hours ago, uh, a baptism was found on, I believe, one of those field trips for an Anna uh, Kurtzinger, uh, Kakeley or, or Kirkley, it looks like. Um, she was uh, baptized in the Catholic Church in Grisheim in 1701, uh, and her parents were uh, Theobald Kritzinger and Maria Suppinger. Wow. Um, the family had six children between 1698 and 1710, and Anna's got four new ancestors. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Well, she knew they were there all along, but you know, we <laughs> <True>. to... <laughs> not new we to didn't. her, new to me. <laughs> right. We we had some fun sorting out the um, Adam family uh, from Anna, who married into the Cakeleys. Um, there was a lot of growth in records in Prussia for Francis Adam from Detroit. Uh, he was baptized Franz, and I know he had a brother, Franz Wilhelm, um, who also came to Detroit and another brother, Franz uh, Xavier, who mm -hmm. stayed in Prussia. And uh, there were 10 direct ancestors added on the Adam side and 11 on his mother's side. Wow. So wow. that uh, was loads of fun. Yeah. And there was a, a Heinrich Zeppenfeld, a, your sixth great-grandfather. He was one of the earliest. He was born about 1710 in, in Westphalia. And he married uh, a Mary Coster there okay, nice. in the 1700s. And we and we did get our little bit of geography lesson again this week nice. after this chart was made. So okay. um, it wasn't Prussia during the time it's marked on all of those people. So for part of it, it was just Westphalia. That's true. And we then, said Prussian records and, and uh, our German uh, colleagues had to say, you know, it wasn't really <laughs> Prussia. You know, there's the Duchy of Westphalia and then there was the Kingdom of Westphalia. And ah. uh, yes, yeah, so, so we're learning how... Uh, but that is one of the... One Places. of the reasons we invite them in also. Yeah, <laughs> Please so correct us. Because right. nice. yeah. we do, yeah, it's good to be corrected uh, when you're working <laughs> in an area that's new to you. Um, let's see, then we we came back into Tennessee um, to the Dixons. Um, and we know, you know, you know that James Bedford Dixon died in 68. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some, it's Interesting, when did he die? The obituary says, uh, was published on Sunday the 15th in Jackson, and it says he died Friday, um, so Friday the 13th. But if you go look at the Find a Grave Memorial, it says he died on December 15th, which was the date of the obituary, and his tombstone just says December with a blank spot for the day. Mm -hmm. Like, we not <laughs> wanted James We're not put it soul. By, um, so we'd love to hear what, what you and, um, and your mom and folks think of that. The, yeah. So the Federal Death Index also says December 15th. So did people not want to write down that he died on Friday the 13th? Or was there an error? Was the obituary wrong? And he really died that morning. I think they would have known when they were writing the paper yeah. uh, when he passed away, you know, or at least um, be close. Yeah. Well, that's, so, yeah, that's very interesting. I have not heard that and I didn't really look at, into his day. Right. So. Yeah. Cause we definitely got to look into that death index and it just tells us the month. So yep. Yeah. Somebody probably still has a funeral card or something um, for him. So, so yeah. that would be interesting and we'd love to be corrected for when he died. <laughs> okay. You'll have, uh, yeah. You'll have to let us know what you find out. I will. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Right. We like to look at where, people lived and died and were buried and, and mm -hmm. churches and, and schools and, and professions. Uh, but we always are, many of us are fascinated by the military history. So we enjoy 
looking at where folks served. I know um, you, pro you, you know, the, these folks are not uh, news to you. Uh, Michael Quigley, of course, from the revolution. Um, I think it was, let's see that quartermaster sergeant, Cornelius Vincent, I noticed that um, in one of our favorite lineage organizations for the revolution, there's there's folks who share a couple of generations with you. So that might be yeah. fun uh, to look at. And, and everybody on this side, of course, from Pennsylvania. And then we uh, found a uh, George Watson that his burial card and, and service records from from the War of 1812. And I'm sure there's a lot more Civil War veterans in the tree sure. that, that we noted um, that that these brothers, the Bennets, though they were um, their sister Elizabeth Bennett married into the Kappenbarger family, and they both served in the 10th Kansas Infantry. And unfortunately, Joseph uh, was lost and uh, he, he was killed in action and buried in Alton, Illinois. And his brother was a corporal and was with uh, originally the, the the same company and and then probably maybe for a promotion moved into uh, another company of the 10th Kansas but I'm sure he must have been right there in Illinois mm -hmm. when his little brother passed away so wow. yeah. um, so it's always um, we like to honor the folks who served and, yeah. and learn more about their histories well the, um, you know maybe Oh, go ahead, Dina. Can I say on the Vincent, you mentioned there were several generations, but there's actually, there's a father, son, and grandson, and the wife of the middle generation who all helped to, to defend a fort. And she wow. was um, taking wow. the silverware and uh, melting it down to make um, bullets. And so she's actually Sweet somebody bullets. I can, I'm, I'm in the DAR under Michael Quigley, but I can join under a female, which I think is pretty neat, but that whole yes. group of four of them. That's neat. Is it your birthday, Mindy? It was. It okay. was two well, days ago. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Yeah, I have tried finding a female patriot on my line. Can't find one. Yeah. yeah that's pretty rare. Rare. But, um, too, I chose a French patriot because I think it's fun that they just had to, the, you know, they never crossed over a border in uh, up in the Midwest. The borders just crossed over them. And if they wanted to keep their land, they had to sign oaths, oaths of allegiance, and they all declared themselves to be Virginians. Um, oh, yes, uh, we had some Adams, the Adams family. We had to educate our German <laughs> colleagues about why we were joking about the Adams family. And uh, we found an Uncle Fester, uh, which we did not. Yeah, you know, too, I bet, bad. Uh, too bad. I, bet, I wouldn't be surprised. I heard Mindy had a nice birthday dinner, but I wouldn't be surprised if she spent uh, part of her birthday working on one of her big brick wall fan charts. Um, she is the queen. Uh, <laughs> of the of the fan charts for our guests, okay. um, but and and then Mindy, why don't you tell us about that, and then we'll see what kind of questions and comments folks have from from the peanut gallery and our our friends. Certainly. Now, this is the the brick wall chart that I work from and the captains work from when we're looking at points and what's available. This is nine generations for Dana, and so 510 ancestors. Now, every one of those yellow spots that you see is an available brick wall ancestor. That's an ancestor that is not on her primary tree. So as we're building out the branches and trying to make them complete and accurate, this is what we look for. We try and fill in those spots. And if you look on the right, that little pop out, it kind of shows you what I do as I go in and I put the little bees on there for every time we break a brick wall down. And Dana, you'll get a copy of all of this, you know, the, the charts and whatnot, starting and finishing along with all kinds of other goodies. Um, but that's what we look at as far as points. And then do we want to do questions before we get into collaboration? That sounds good. And one thing I didn't bring to us is what um, is our DNA update from Emma, our um, DNA confirmation queen. So I'm going to run and look at uh, Dana's family tree and see what happened there while you talk about points and the challenge and questions. Well, let's go ahead and look and see if we have any questions out there mm -hmm. or anything else interesting that you guys saw that we didn't get into the, um, I know there's a lot, we didn't get into the presentation. Dana, you're gonna find all kinds of good stuff. Nice. And I know, you know, one of the things that I personally love about Wikitree Always Have is that white space that we have. We can basically build anything. We can add pictures, we can put a long narrative. Um, the research notes are my favorite. 
you know, you can put negative evidence where you looked, oh, I checked this record set, they weren't there, or this is why I changed the middle name, um, you know, hints that will hopefully help you break down the ones that we didn't break down in the future. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and I feel bad I wasn't watching comments because I had it zoomed in because I was reading everything. So <laughs> I'll watch this again and look through the comments. And <laughs> That's okay. And I can see that uh, we noted we like to, uh, we have a, a very persnickety or particular procedure for uh, marking relationships as confirmed with DNA. And, uh, and I note on Dana's tree of her uh, 16 great, great grandparents that we have marked, um, well, for her eight great, great grandparents, we've marked DNA confirmations for 10 out of their 16 parents. So uh, the Dixons and Wards and, and uh, Bennett's and, and Werther's and Peter's, uh, those folks have been marked on the right there. You can see uh, we haven't been editing your your grandparents. Of course, when you have a close connection, you'll know that um, that you've confirmed that. But we we noted that and uh, added added citations that'll say like uh, this is proven by Dana's relationship to her second cousin or third cousin. Got it. Yep. Great. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes. Lizzie. Lizzie said it's lovely that your family yeah. is watching. I know. I love it. It's a family affair. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. great that you that you have so many people interested in it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate this so much. I appreciate all the hours and people who have researched this week. This is just amazing. I love what you guys are doing. And I'm so excited. Can't wait to go and look at it in more detail and, um, just dig into this myself now. <laughs> so thank oh, you. Oh, we must have pruned a relationship that Donna lost her cousin relationship with you. And oh, I don't know oh, either. So, you know, I have a friend who, who when we disprove connections, they like to say, sorry for your loss. Uh, sorry, you're not a made Sorry for your loss. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry for the loss of oh, your, your purported ancestors. Yeah. So Amy Johnson Crow just said there's still that half, there's a half connection and that's, who I'd ran into at Roots Tech, and we had seen that, that we were not quite there yet. So, um, yeah, nice. Oh, yeah, so and of course, fun. of course, the more you add, you know, the, the more it, uh, you've connections you find and the yeah. closer you might get on the connections. Yeah. I think we just, we did, we got so hyper-focused and people really were, you know, sometimes by the last day, um, people are kind of relaxed and they're like, oh, I can breathe now. It's, this week's almost over. I got to get myself geared up for next week. Yeah. And not, not for you today. They were like down to the uh -huh. last minute going, okay, I can pull that record for you. What else can I no. do? <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> oh, here's somebody else who has, um, a connection awesome to the Klein side. Great, oh, Lucy. Yay. Hi, Just cousin. <laughs> so not just mom and sister and brother and niece and everything, but all these cousins out there too. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Yep. <sighs> oh, wow. So you really okay. want to go. Well, yeah. I'm oh. going to go back into, let's see if we can get here to talk about how the team did. How we did with collaboration and what we did with it. <laughs> now <laughs> collaboration, of course, is key during the challenge. And I mean, that that's really what Wikitree is all about, is us collaborating and working together. So on the left, you see our spreadsheet. Now this is where we hopefully put the profile that we're working on at that time. And that way, you know, when you get too many people, and I believe you had um, somewhere close to 40 people actually touched your branches at some point. So nice. it was a really busy week. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not stepping on people's toes or making them lose their work. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the right is the G2G post. Now we put that there are the great grandparents names. And we used to use it for a lot more things. Some people still do put questions or interesting finds there. Mostly what we're using it for right now is those brick walls. So if people want brick wall points, they got to put them out there so that me and the captain can see them and we make sure we get those assigned. And you'll get a link to that too. 
And the third way, of course, is Discord. And as Melanie has learned, it's just, it's a, yeah, the challenge and Discord are addictive. And Discord stays busy all, all times of day and night. We're a global site, so there's always somebody in there talking. And this way we can go in, we can ask for that translation help, we can have our German or whatever area experts come in and give us pointers or do translations for us. You know, we can just kind of cheer each other on. We have some people that are just great at finding obituaries in the newspaper. Uh, we have one guy that loves to do um, the transcriptions and, mm -hmm. you know, he unfortunately didn't have a lot to do this week, but he was there for us in case we needed it. I did mm -hmm. see his work on one profile. He said he didn't do anything, but he's lost because I, cause I saw his name and his work on somebody's profile. Okay, and this is what we do at the end of the week. We go ahead and look at these points. Now, of course, it's not all about the points, but points are a good motivator. So we give 10 points for every brick, the first brick wall ancestor on every line. Mm -hmm. And then we give individual points for adding nuclear relatives. Now that would be siblings or children within one step of the direct ancestors. And at the end of the week, we look at the total scores. And so our MVP, uh, most valuable player, of course, this week was D. Peter Levitens, and he is one of our uh, awesome German experts, and he was number one. Yeah. Yeah, I Big. that one, two, and three are, are uh, proficient in German research. Yes, so. nice. yes. <laughs> These were our main German ones. So Kathy nice. Rabenstein yeah. did a lot of amazing work. Um, she really did some beautiful <laughs> profiles. You see when you get out there cruising through the branches and look at your profiles. And Jelena Ekstad, now she usually also is our um, expert on locations. So she'll go mm -hmm. through and, and proof our, our locations and get them fixed for us so that they're as accurate as they can be. Now, Anonymous Sharky, um, this person has just been there every week, just pounding in there and learning and, you know, helping out. And the same with Donna Bowman. Um, those are two of our, our top people that just like to get in there and see what they can do uh, best to help people. Nice. So I have to ask now, have we met at least your expectations <laughs> on what the challenge would be this week? Absolutely. <laughs> you guys have blown me away. Um, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Thank you to the MVP and the top five and to everybody who helped. Um, I'm just amazed and yeah, thank you so much. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and lead into Melanie's week. <laughs> and, and this has been a big deal because we were talking about this before we came on and at the start. Um, but Melanie wanted to check it out and see ahead of time, you know, what the whole thing was behind the scenes, what it was like and what was going to happen maybe during her week and also pay it forward a little bit. And so um, she has been working with us and she's becoming quickly becoming addicted to Wiki like the rest mm -hmm. of us are. <laughs> Already there. <laughs> Already there. Yeah, have to invite her to uh, some other wikis and some other discords so she has someone to talk to this week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you can go, uh, Melanie. And I, Melanie got put Dana in um, Discord jail and wiki tree jail so she cannot oh. participate this week <laughs> right. and she cannot see the challenge rooms. Yeah. But yeah, we can add you to the regular wiki tree server, okay. which is separate. And that way you can still talk to wiki treeers. Now, for those of you that don't know, Melanie is a genealogist at NEHGS. She's an experienced international speaker. I don't know why I'm getting. Um, she has a blog, The Shamrock Genealogist. She holds a Bachelor of Science from the State University of New York. Her areas of interest are Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Kansas, Prince Edward Island, and Quebec. That's a lot. And she's experienced <laughs> in genetic genealogy, genealogical technology, social media, military records, and the Irish and Jewish. Now, did I miss anything there, Melanie? Because I, I keep always... adding, I keep adding as I go. To be honest, though, so I think that's the main ones. <laughs> Okay, and here is where we say she's been a tremendous help this past week, and she's now officially locked out of the Discord rooms. In case you had hadn't tried to look, you're definitely locked out now, and in your Wiki Tree jail. So everybody send good thoughts out to her, and um, yeah, 
no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't don't go on our Facebook and tell her what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, and that that doesn't that's not good. That's not good. So, so let's go ahead and find out a little bit more. Okay. What got you interested, Melanie, in the first place in genealogy? I would say probably just not knowing a lot about uh, some of my other grandparents, um, especially on my father's side. So on my father's side, my pater my paternal grandfather died when I was about two. And then my paternal grandmother died when I was about was between six and eight. To be honest, I actually remember going to her funeral and I just felt like I missed out on the stories, the connections. And there was always just like the mystery of knowing more, um, especially on my father's side, exactly where in Ireland they came from. We had some ideas, but um, so it really kept me, you know, going, just trying to look into, you know, what else could I find about them? Um, I was told that my paternal grandmother used to tell my father that, uh, that his father said that, you know, that her husband's side was a bunch of, uh, you know, descended from a bunch of horse thieves in Ireland. So when I was in college, I was determined to look into the story and just see what was going on because I figured, okay, uh, Irish Catholic family, um, what can I really find? You know, you know, you know, is it like, are there really going to be any really big surprises? And I, I did, and I just got sucked into it. And it's just, it's just been such a journey to reunite and meet other new cousins that I've never known on both sides of my family. Right. Now, who is your favorite ancestor if you had to pick one? I would probably say my maternal great-grandfather, um, Anton Galunas. I actually met him at his 100th birthday. Uh, he lives to be 102. And uh, so we were um, there for his birthday party in his nursing home. And, I, you know, he had his, he was very, he kept his wit with him. He was, you know, he kept his, uh, he could remember a lot of things even up to that point. And the stories that I know about him are, I'm still kind of deciphering some of the lore and the fact. Um, but basically, he was born in Lithuania. The family moved uh, when he was young to Latvia. He emigrated from Riga, Latvia uh, to New York. He came alone. Um, I don't think he had any siblings. Haven't been able to figure that out. Um, his parents stayed behind. I don't think he ever really saw them again. Um, and he really built himself a, a brand new life. I was told that he served um, during World War I. And if you check out my blog, you might see some articles I found that talked about some of his service. It looked like he was a sailor on a commercial uh, fruit ship that was actually deployed during World War I to help bring supplies over. And these, I, I would hear stories from my grandmother talking about that uh, he would tell her when she was a little girl that he used to, he actually came uh, to a part of Brazil during one of his trips and was like cutting the cutting the Amazon with machetes and there was anacondas everywhere and just like just he's just sounding like such an adventurer you know talking about preparing like a special fish dish and he just sounded like he just had no fear and he's just been really interesting to look into because he's just been such such of an enigma um, trying to find out more about him um, on his marriage record he didn't know his mother's maiden name shame on him. So that really um, puts it. So I don't really know a lot about him. I think I found his father briefly in a directory in Riga based on the address, but that's about all I know. So I, I really hope I could find more stories about him because I feel like there's a lot more to be told. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it. Now, do you have any interesting stories that you found out on this genealogical journey? I did. And I actually found a mystery in uh, actually an interesting relative we didn't know about in my father's side of the family. So we actually learned that my great grandfather, he was actually he, he was born in Ireland. Um, he was born in um, and, and grew up in Dillonstown County, Louth. And before he came to America and married my great grandmother, um, I we found a, we found a, we found a bit of a surprise in the DNA. I actually had someone reach out to me and she left me kind of a, a very um, secretive message in a way. It was just the way it was written. She said, I'm happy my grandfather found happiness in America. And she used his name. 
And I thought, maybe it's another relative out there. I'm like, Thomas Corcoran, that's kind of a common name in the family. Thomas is pretty common. And it was only after like really digging in, I think maybe a year or two later, where I started to figure out what had happened. And she started to open up more about the story. And it turns out that he had actually um, was, was involved with a young servant girl that worked in the household of his family. She got pregnant, had a child named after him, Thomas Corcoran Jr. And then he supposedly was pressured by his parents to leave for America two years later because he wanted to marry her. That's the family story we hear. And it, it blows my mind because it makes me think that if he didn't go to America, I wouldn't exist. <laughs> At least the part of me that is here today. Um, so it just really um, was an interesting story because, like I said, I keep hearing about, you know, in the Irish Catholic, you know, thing like, oh, what could really I find? Like, this is what you find. And I don't think my great grandmother ever knew that he had another child before marrying her because he actually had another son that he named Thomas later on with her. So it was a family, it, it felt like it was a secret. They were, it was being hidden and we only just discovered it through the power of DNA because of his granddaughter um, actually reaching out and, and I, he saw the details together and was able to find a lot of the records. Yeah, it's incredible all the tools that we have available to us now to, you know, to find these stories. And we all have those skeletons rattling in the back of the closet that are going to find out, fall out sooner or later. Yeah. So. <laughs> I now, always when do. <laughs> you, when did you first discover Wiki Tree? Um, I would say it was probably, oh, probably in the last five years or so at Roots Tech. I think I saw a booth. I think that was a common experience. I think a lot of uh, presenters have found on there. And I think I started talking with different people, um, like, and I eventually was talking with people like Mags, for example, for a while, because she was at a lot of conferences I was at. And so, yeah, so I started kind of dabbling and just kind of, you know, just seeing what's here, adding a couple things here and there. And obviously, in the last year, I've really been learning a lot more about WikiTree. So... It's definitely a lot of fun. A learning curve at first, but a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what are your current, um, your most difficult brick walls right now? My most difficult brick walls are probably going to be on my mother's side. So to give an idea of what my ancestry is, so as you could probably tell, so my father's side is Irish. Um, most of them went from either directly from Ireland to Prince Edward Island, Canada, or from Ireland to New York. And um, my mother's side is Eastern European Jewish, so coming from... Lithuania, Latvia, Romania, um, Galicia, uh, Ukraine. So looking at um, that side, that's probably going to be the most challenging. That's been the most challenging for me. And that's because, um, you know, not being able to read all the languages that the records could be in, the records not being available, readily available to get from the archives, um, you know, and just even the time and cost that would probably would be involved to really get into it. Versus my father's side, I feel like it's so well documented. There's, you know, they're in newspapers, they're in genealogies, they're, there's all these DNA matches. And on the Jewish side, I have very few DNA matches I've been able to can really confirm. Like, I have tons of Jewish matches with all the endogamy, but there's just, you know, and Dana, Dana knows all about that. So, you know, working with DNA. Um, but, you know, it's it's been... I have to go like almost laterally side by side at all the siblings and really piece it together. So I think that's going to be your most challenging part is my mother's side. Yeah. Now, what do you hope to see participating? You definitely already know what kind of things um, come out of the challenge. So what are you hoping for? I'm curious to see, besides just sourcing the profiles and getting them as accurate as possible, finding more stories that I'm hoping may even lead to more cousins later on. Like I have no problem reaching out to new people, but I think if we can find anything else new that even just gives me a nugget of a lead, it will be so worth it. I've been looking so forward to doing this week. It, you have no idea. I think when I first got asked, I was dreaming about this. This is this is like a, <laughs> this is like a dream come true. Having other people want to help you and do your genealogy and. It, it's such a gift to be able to give someone back their heritage. And that's how I look at it. This is a way of giving back a piece of me that I didn't know I had. 
that's a really nice way to put it, you know, and I know, I know that's how we feel, you know, this is, this is a wonderful gift that we can give to each one of our guests to be able to spend this time and focus all of us together, you know, collaboratively and just work on your branches. Because especially for you guys that are, you know, involved in genealogy in any way professionally, you never have time to work on your own trees. You're like, oh, I'll get to that so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> and they sit there for a while. Yeah. Um, it's, so. it's, bits, it's bits and pieces mostly. You're right. So it's kind of like you get it when you can and maybe I'll work on a little part of it. So. And just the peer review, you know, uh, to collaborate yes. together and um, whether, I don't know why we think genealogy needs to be a hobby that you do all alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think anything um, you could find would just be, would just be immensely powerful. Um, I know very much how emotional it is to, to really connect people with their family history. So, and I really appreciate that. This question was for you, Melanie. Let's see. I see you posting your blog. Would I be able to share the photo? Um, I think that should be fine because that one actually came from one of my um, my second one of my second cousins that actually took the photo. So I think that's fine if you want to use that one. Uh, but for the most part, most of the fine degree photos, I would probably say we should hold off unless the um, author um, gets permission. But for that one, I think that's okay. Um, and I also have the picture of Tessie Freundlich, um, my great grandmother, that I also just recently got from that cousin. So you can use that one as well. I was given permission to use that as I needed. But um, I don't have a lot of family photos on my tree. So if you if you have some great, use them. I could always add more later. Um, I just haven't really uploaded a lot to my ancestry.com tree. Yeah, and as a reminder to all of our participants that are out there um, watching in the audience tonight, you know, there's a lot of the fine degree people that are like us at Wikitree. They're putting this stuff out there because they want to share it with the world and they want people to have that connection with their ancestor that they can't go and visit at that cemetery. So a good thing to do when you see that somebody has taken a picture is go ahead and click on their name and look at their profile. Mm -hmm. I know my find a great profile, it says right on there, please use those pictures for whatever you wanna use them for, that's that's what they're there for. I will say that for a lot of the uh, Prince Edward Island photographs, there's like one or two people that post a lot of the pictures you'll see in my tree. Um, they may be willing to give permission. Um, one of them is actually related to me. <laughs> one of them is just very kind volunteer, so yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions now before we wrap up for the night? I just love that leg, you know, between, yeah. between us and, and when they're typing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit slow. Yeah, if I, could, I, if I can add like one hint on the Irish, if that'll help your team at all. Um, certainly. Is, okay, so for the, so for, as you can see, there's a couple of migrations of the Irish um, coming over to either Canada or to the US. Um, just to kind of break it down a little bit, uh, the Corcorans went from um, Ireland directly to the United States. Don't see any evidence of them in Canada. The other lines are going to primarily go through Prince Edward Island, the Doherty's, the Clarkins, and some of the other families. You'll see that. Um, there's only one family that went to Prince Edward Island during the famine uh, that, I, that I could find. It was the couples related to um, the, um, it was uh, it was a Mary Doherty and it was, I think it was the Rooney's I wanna say. So um, those are the ones that came from uh, Fermanagh, County, County Fermanagh. Those are the ones that actually came on a coffin ship over to uh to Prince Edward Island so just to keep that in mind that with the time period uh, most of the ones that came over came over pre-famine like probably you know 1830s or so versus they were the only ones that came over around that time um in the 1840s so in case that helps a little bit um and I will tell you there's already a fun story on the Duffs that I already know about but if you want to add more to it they were publicans they own their own pub if you go on Griffith's valuation and you look for them in the records, you can actually, I think, see a visual on the map. They literally had a bar on the hill. So that might be a fun one. If you want to find more newspaper notices, court notices about them serving alcohol on Sundays, I've seen some of those. You know, <laughs> that's a fun one to do. 
and I think Chris might enjoy, you know, working on the, yes, I have, I have a Duff line that served alcohol. So like, <laughs> like your Simpsons, no references. So, if so. Maddie or John or someone want to field trip to the hill and find out if you could still acquire alcohol, you know, they could report back. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, and I've been, and I actually looked at the property. I think it was like for sale, um, so it's fortunately it's not there anymore. The bar. Oh, that's but I think too I, bad, huh? But there's some pictures on there's some pictures online. It's kind of like foreclosed right now, so I I keep meaning to like but um, send an email to the realtor to see if they can maybe find out more about it. So yes, I think you will be learning a lot about Prince Edward Island, Canada. As you'll see, I have very heavy um, influence on my family. Uh, there's a lot of great resources. I'll be dropping some hints on Twitter. Um, so if anybody's in Discord, we'll, I'm sure they'll share them along. Um, I also helped co-write a subject guide on my website about Prince Edward Island. I'll drop that for you. So feel free <laughs> to use that because you're probably going to need it. So, <laughs> and. Well I think you'll have all the tools you'll need to be honest. And again, I'm just so thankful for everything here. Well, we're, we're really happy to be able to work on your branches here, Melanie and Dana. It has been such a pleasure to work on yours, um, finding all the things we did. And it's always so hard to end the week. You know, we just want to keep going and getting that last, <laughs> that last new ancestor. Uh, in there. Yeah. But well, I will again. have, yeah, I'll have lots of stuff to send you later. So we always tell okay. people don't plan on sleeping because <laughs> you're going to want to look through everything now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I finished just... that a bunch of stuff today so I can have tomorrow off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is perfect. And oh, then I um, want to go ahead, Karen. And Anne chimes in and, and wants to know if we have any good Anne of Green Gables connections this week. <laughs> I don't think I do. So I'd be curious if I did, but I don't think I do. I, I was even hoping for being related to Owen Connolly that had like the famous estate on PEI. Nope, different Connolly line. <laughs> John says he will not be driving to Fermona for us. It's a little far. That's, a, that's okay. <laughs> not as far as it is from here. You know what? Maybe you'll have some good stories. You'll be, you maybe you'll be inspired for next time for, you know, a trip. So. Thanks, John. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to have a, I'll try to have a good week in Discord jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to thank both of you for coming on tonight. Thank, thank you to you. our guests that are watching this, or we wouldn't have been here. Um, thank you definitely uh, to the participants. You guys just amaze me every week. Mm -hmm. You just get in there and you do so much. Um, you know, and this uh, of course is all volunteer your time, and we really appreciate it. I, and I know the guests do as well. Absolutely. And if anybody wants to know more, check us out at wikitree.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to um, receive alerts. And I think that that is it. We will say good night. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye.